This is the Dell Pro 16, Dell's fresh rebrand of what used to be known as the Latitude. These are aimed at business users who want a well-built laptop that's designed to last. Is it really any good, or is it just a typical rebranding for the sake of it? Let's find out. Fortunately, this laptop supports charging via both the traditional small tip power adapter and USB-C. However, the downside of USB-C charging is that it uses the laptop's only Thunderbolt 4 port. So, while charging through USB-C, you can't take advantage of the ultra-fast 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt speeds. The adjacent USB-C port is a downgraded USB 3.2 but still supports DisplayPort Alt Mode. By combining this port with the HDMI output and the Thunderbolt port, we were able to set up a triple display configuration, all running at a high refresh rate of 120 Hz. There's not much going on on the other side, just two USB ports rated at five gigabits per second and a standard gigabit ethernet port. One thing we really appreciated was Dell's decision to move away from the wider aspect ratio in favor of a taller one. Take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison. Even though the overall size increased by less than half an inch, the display feels noticeably larger and is significantly better for reading and productivity. The display is anti-glare. The laptop does an excellent job of minimizing reflections. As you can see, we have two bright lights shining less than two feet above it. The viewing angles are really good as well. Here, have a look for yourself. Getting inside is as easy as ever. You only need a small Phillips head screwdriver. To prevent scratching, we used a suction cup and a prying tool. However, you could also open it using a hard credit card. The 45 watt hour battery seems rather small. There's plenty of space inside. They could easily have made it a 75 watt hour battery instead. There's only one SSD slot this year. Unlike last year's Latitude 5550, which had two, we're putting together a full comparison video, so stay tuned. You're limited to the 2230 form factor, which restricts your options. Larger capacity memory in 2230 size can be expensive, and as far as we're aware, SSDs with DRAM aren't available in this size. DRAM makes a huge difference in speed while transferring large volume of data. While they gave Wi-Fi 7 a miss for Wi-Fi 6E, having user-replaceable Wi-Fi card means you can easily install an Intel B200 card and get Wi-Fi 7 yourself. There are two down-firing speakers, which are surprisingly loud. The fan itself is slightly smaller than last year's, and we noticed it tends to spin up more often under load. The RAM speed remains the same as last year at 6,500 megatrans per second. Since the modules are still user-replaceable, you can easily upgrade them yourself. On that note, we also offer matching RAM kits. Because DDR5 can be a bit volatile, we recommend using identical modules in both slots for the best stability and performance. Dell's internal space utilization feels under-optimized, 
especially considering what competitors fit in similar chassis sizes. That said, the 45 watt hour pack does recharge rapidly while the system is powered off. Idle power draw seemed somewhat high, although it's possible the system was still settling in after initial setup. For our YouTube playback test, we streamed a full HD video continuously for 30 minutes to monitor power consumption. Finally, to replicate intense office workloads along with light photo and video editing tasks, we ran the PC Mark 10 benchmark. The test completed in 27 minutes. Here is a list of all processors available worldwide, including custom orders. But what you see here are the off-the-shelf configurations available in the UK at the time of filming. The Core 5 versions are highlighted in blue, and the Core Ultra 5 versions are highlighted in green. The key difference between the two categories is that the Core 5 series does not include ultra-low power efficiency cores or built-in AI capability, both of which are features of the Core Ultra 5 series. Since this is a productivity-focused laptop, we ran the PC Mark 10 benchmark, which measures performance in everyday office tasks, light photo editing, and some video rendering. We then compared it against the most logical competitor, the Dell Latitude 5550 from the previous year, and the results were surprising. As you can see, it fell behind across the board. Some might argue that the Dell uses an i7 processor in the Latitude, but it's also two generations older. But to be honest, we expected a bit more. Just out of curiosity, we also wanted to see what kind of mini PC this could keep up with. So we tested it against a Lenovo M70Q powered by a 12th generation Intel processor. And again, the results were underwhelming. It was another loss across the board. So, I suppose this won't be replacing your desktop PC just yet. We ran Cinebench tests for those CPU intensive tasks, and it was pretty close to the same latitude 5550 also. So to summarize, aesthetically, this is a good upgrade performance wise. Not so much. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share.